As we all know, setting up your controller for Flight Simulator 2024 can be kind of challenging and a lot of work. I already recorded a lot of videos about that, but in this video I will show you another way how to configure your controller more easy. And the best thing is, there's a bonus thing also included for you at the end of the video. But first, let's roll the intro. For most of you, this screen should look pretty familiar. It might be that there are some other names, such as the uh, device names, but other than that, it should be the same. And keep in mind, I'm using sim update number 3 beta, where the filtering, which was previously uh, on the left side, has now been moved over here, right? So you can now change the, your filter to, for example, show only the assigned items or only the unassigned items. Or maybe you want to see only the ones which are digital or you prefer to have them the analog, right? Or maybe aircraft, category specific. These are all nice filters, but of course it still remains a lot of work configuring your uh, joystick the first time. Because we all know that the setups which are delivered out of the box are not always idle. And I would say sometimes they're not working perfectly. At least that's my opinion. Uh, so based on that, I already recorded a lot of videos as we all know. And you might have seen them on my channel, but I figured out that there might be an easier way to share them with you because I can understand that fully watching a video is nice, but you might want to have an easier way to take kind of uh, import, for example, the complete settings. Well, the good news is that that's also possible with Flight Simulator 2024. I'm first going to show you how you can export it, right? Just for example, where you want to create a backup in case you install a new sim update for example and you lose all your settings then you can easily restore your settings so to do that there are a few options and the first thing is that you uh, might think okay hey it can be done on the controller itself but unfortunately that's not possible the only way to do that is by uh, clicking on the specific item in this case the general controllers and then say export this will bring up this window and by default it will be stored in a very lengthy path which is in this case the app local data packages microsoft limitless and then the local state folder but of course you can easily change it right you can change it for example to your desktop or maybe some other drive so let me do that right some can say okay hey i want to uh, store to my c drive and i want to create a new folder called uh, msfs Whoa. msfs backup Then I open it and then click save. By default, it will get the name of the device you're using or of the profile you selected. So in this case, I'm going to select this one and says it has been exported successfully. Then of course, I can do the same thing for uh, the uh, airplane's control. So I'm going to click export. I'm going to go to the folder which I created. That's the only irritating thing is that you need to modify it continuously unless you accept the default folder. Select them as a pickup and then i need to put something behind it because keep in mind it's only using the name itself it doesn't include the category in this case uh, airplanes uh, controls i click on save and then my let's say profiles are stored correctly as mentioned already by default it's stored let's say in a drive on your uh local or the drive on your profile and your profile can be accessed by going to a uh, local app data percentage there you will find a lot of folders of course including some flight simulator folders including some other folders which you might want to use but inside the packages folder you will find the folder which is a little bit weird it's not called flight simulator that's what you would expect but it's called the microsoft limitless folder and there you will find that local state folder which uh, is the default path where it will store the backups it's not required to store them here as you already saw because i also store them on a different folder and it works perfectly fine you can also for example store it in a complete different uh, i would say uh, drive right maybe on your usb drive or something 
And the nice thing is that once you've done that, you can go to them, right? So let me go to the uh, folder itself. And now is open these files. Uh, you can't open them with Edge, although it says you can do that. But you can, for example, open them with Visual Studio Code. But if you don't have Visual Studio Code installed, you can also use, for example, a Notepad. So let's do that. And here you will have got all the settings which are, I would say, in the configuration file. It's a pretty lengthy one. I would say modifying this one manually, I would strongly discourage it to do it. But of course, it's up to you uh, to decide if you want to do that. So... Now imagine that you've got this nice file with all the settings. You probably already saw the optional, so called import. So let me select this one and then I can select import. This will of course allow you to import that XML file so you can go to your drive, which is by default the local state folder in your uh, app data. And in my case, I want to move it, right? I want to go to the C drive and there I've got the folder msfs backup and then i can select the item and once i selected the item uh, i can back install or recover it sure uh, the nice thing about this is that if i uh, press import it says okay hey uh import is account an unexpected failure and that sometimes happens uh, what i figured out is that at most cases that will happen if you select an incorrect device so what you need to do is make sure that you select the device then select it again, then say import, go to your drive again, and then go to MSVS Backup, and then select the folder, and then says, hey, I already found the name. Are you sure you want to override it? And then you can either press OK, or you can press Cancel. Right? These names are unique, so be aware of that. Now, of course, I promised you a bonus. So what I did is I exported all my custom configurations for the Velocity one, but also for my other joysticks, which I'm using, and I stored them on a GitHub repository. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video where you can download those, and you can simply use this import option, which I just showed you, to easily import them so you don't have to, say, manually set up your device. Of course, it's up to you if you want to use it, because setting up the device also allows you to customize things. So here in this video, where we looked at how you can export your profiles for multiple purposes. One of them is exporting them for backup purposes in case sim update number three, which will likely soon land, will screw something up or maybe one of the future updates. You can still have the option to restore your configuration for your controllers. Besides that, we also looked at where it's being stored by default local app data. And I showed you how to store it in a different folder. And we looked at the content of the folder or the file specifically, to be honest. As last option, I gave you the bonus where I said, okay, hey, I'm gonna export all my profiles and store them on the GitHub repository where you can easily download them and then import them in your Flight Simulator 2024 installation. Again, here in this video, I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then hit the like button and I hope to see you back for my next video very soon.